During World War II, some of the most remarkable innovations didn't come from laboratories or weapon designers, but from soldiers freezing in trenches and soaked through in makeshift camps. It was there, amid the mud and chaos, that a simple but revolutionary shelter design was born. A rainproof structure made not from canvas or metal, but from dirt, wax and, well, raw ingenuity. This improvised method was so effective that it baffled engineers and outperformed issued tarps under prolonged storms. Known among Allied engineers as the earthen wax seal, it was part necessity, part chemistry, and entirely human resilience. In the early years of the war, standard-issue tents leaked under heavy rain, especially in cold or coastal regions. Supply chains were stretched thin, and waterproof fabric was prioritised for uniforms, not shelters. Troops stationed in remote posts, particularly in Norway, Finland and Eastern Europe, had to rely on the environment itself. It was there that soldiers learned how to turn the very ground beneath their feet into a watertight roof. What began as a crude experiment became one of the most effective field shelters ever built, and, honestly, modern campers, even with advanced materials, have struggled to match its performance. The idea began with a problem. Canvas tents, once soaked, became heavier, colder, and impossible to dry. Soldiers tried waxing their tents or layering tar paper, but those fixes failed in the field. The turning point came when Finnish troops, famous for their survival instincts in sub-zero weather, noticed that paraffin wax mixed with certain clay-rich soils formed a water-resistant crust. When spread over a surface and heated slightly by fire or sun, the mixture bonded together, hardening into a natural seal. This trick spread quickly through partisan and resistance networks, eventually reaching Allied engineers who began adapting it for temporary shelters. The formula was simple. Mix roughly one part melted wax with four to five parts damp, Find soil, stir until it reached a paste consistency, and apply it over a base layer of woven grass, moss, or bark. Once cooled, it formed a hard, smooth surface that shed rain effortlessly, even under heavy downpours. Field tests recorded in 1943 by a Royal Engineers unit in Scotland noted that a shelter covered with this dirt and wax mixture stayed dry for ten consecutive days of rain, while canvas coverings soaked through within 48 hours. Ah, the secret lay in how the wax sealed those microscopic gaps in the soil while the dirt itself... Well, it protected the wax from melting or cracking under the sun's exposure. It was primitive chemistry, you see, solving modern waterproofing long before polymers ever existed. To create one of these shelters, soldiers began with a simple lean-to or trench roof framework made from wooden poles or scavenged branches. They laid a layer of woven vegetation usually dried reeds, moss or grass, which served as the base to hold the wax-soil mixture. Over this went the paste, spread by hand or shovel until it reached about one inch thick. Once cooled, it solidified into a crust that could be further strengthened by layering additional dirt or ash. The final result, well, it resembled a natural hillside, more than a man-made roof. Rainwater flowed off smoothly, pooling away from the trench instead of seeping through. Some units even discovered that sprinkling a thin layer of fine ash or sand on top kept the surface from becoming slippery or reflective, reducing visibility from the air. 
Because the materials were locally sourced, soldiers could repair or expand their shelters endlessly. Unlike fabric, which degraded in constant damp, the earthen wax layer could be patched with a bit of melted candle or grease. In extreme cold, when wax was scarce, animal fat and even soap were substituted with surprisingly effective results. Modern waterproof fabrics? You know, they rely on coatings that degrade with abrasion or exposure to UV light. In contrast, the World War II earthen wax composite actually used the environment as part of its structure. Because dirt, clay and wax all shared similar thermal expansion rates, the material didn't crack as temperatures changed. It flexed just a bit, but still maintained its seal. Field notes from a Soviet engineer's manual in 1944 described how waxed soil roofs remained watertight through freezing and thawing cycles, something that, frankly, no fabric could survive. Modern experiments attempting to recreate this design show, really, why it worked so well. The wax particles adhered to fine clay, creating a sort of semi-hydrophobic layer that redirected water horizontally rather than vertically. When applied over a natural substrate like moss or grass, that redirection became self-reinforcing. Each drop that landed on the roof actually helped compact the structure instead of weakening it. The result, well, was a self-healing waterproof system. Minor punctures sealed naturally as residual wax melted from body heat or nearby fire smoke, spreading into cracks. That property is nearly impossible to replicate with synthetic membranes, which, you know, rely on uniform factory coatings. For anyone interested in historical survival engineering, the process is honestly practical and teachable. The modern equivalent requires nothing more than beeswax or candle wax, fine soil with a good clay content, and some natural insulation material like leaves, grass, or straw. In a small test shelter or lean-to, melt one kilogram of wax and mix it with four to five kilograms of moist soil until the blend feels thick and pliable, sort of like wet putty. Spread the layer evenly over your base structure, smoothing it down until it's compact. Let it cool for several hours before exposing it to rain. In survival conditions, this mixture creates a waterproof skin that can cover dugouts, storage pits or roof panels. It's heavier than a tarp, but honestly far more durable. For those studying fieldcraft or historical reenactment, it offers a direct, hands-on connection to the ingenuity that kept soldiers alive when resources were scarce. The World War II dirt and wax shelter stands as a reminder that real innovation often comes from desperation, not design labs. It was an answer born from cold, hunger, and the will to endure. It required no exotic materials, no industrial process, only the ability to see value in the ground itself. In an age where waterproofing is defined by brands and coatings, this forgotten method still proves that understanding natural materials can, quite frankly, outperform modern dependence on synthetics. What soldiers once built to survive storms under enemy fire remains a timeless example of practical resilience. History's best inventions often vanish because they were too simple to patent. But for those who study the lessons buried in the mud of the past, this one still speaks clearly. Sometimes the smartest shelter is the one you can build with your own hands and a handful of dirt. To explore more stories of forgotten ingenuity and fieldcraft that still hold power today, subscribe to In the Beginning, 
and share this video with others who know that history's best lessons are never truly lost. They're just waiting to be rediscovered beneath the surface.